Say we live. I want to make sure I can see it on Facebook. Okay. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a special edition of Off the Record, the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have a great get great guest, um, Brother Amir and Sister Sierra. First of all, I want to give you all the greetings of Asalaamu As Alaikum. And I want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedule. I want to thank everybody for watching this um, great podcast that we're working on this afternoon. Uh, when I entitled it For Better or For Worse, we've had couples who've been married 30 years, 20 years, one year, it doesn't matter. We just want to promote love. Um, the first question I want to ask is, how long have you all been married? Almost 10 years now. Almost how long? Almost 10. Okay, praise be to Allah. And how many children do you all have? Five the hard way. Five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sister Mina Hawk says, I'm like, I'm like, I'm salam, Sister Mina Hawk. My, my first question I want to ask for you um, both is, who chose on who first? <laughs> <laughs> who made no, the first that, move? That, who made the first uh, move? Uh, I did, but it, I don't think it was like, uh, it wasn't like I was trying to necessarily get at her because uh, it, the first time I met her, I actually didn't travel because I, you know, I was out here to play football. And so that week I didn't travel and me and my, uh, one of my teammates that didn't travel were walking by and I seen her. And that's when I initially met her, but I didn't start like dating her or nothing. We just were like, you know, friends. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, my sister Mimi and Naima said both some like come to the Tracy. Some says some like family. It's not like you all. Um, sister Sierra, what made you accept uh, Brother Mir when he made his move? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that initial moment again, uh, I honestly just gotta say young and dumb as far as the initial. <laughs> <moment>. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, uh, as he said, we didn't start dating or anything, you know, so we became friends first. And in being friends, I mean, that's a whole different um, reality there. So in being friends, I got to know who he was and I saw how good of a brother he was to his brothers. Okay. And that was a beautiful thing to me. Praise be to a lot. Okay, so Brother Mir, where did y'all go on your first date? <laughs> I don't know, the crazy part about it is um, it was her eye. Like, the, we really only been on one day, and it was her eye. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, she okay, okay. She called me and was like, you want to go for some ice cream? And uh, I was like, you know, cool, because we were, again, we were friends, so it really wasn't like we were going on a date, but it was like a date. And the funny okay. part is, because she had a car, uh, in college, but nobody knew she had a car because she always be modeling every year. So when she picked me up, the driver's side door is the only one. <laughs> that I had a hook. Okay, I had a hook. <laughs> so she had to hop out and open my door. So from the outside looking in again, you know, being raised, uh, you know, you open your door for the sisters. Yeah. Her getting out the car and opening my door, it was it was crazy feeling. But it, it, the first day we went to Bronx for ice cream, uh, and it was her idea. Okay, excellent. Uh, welcome, Salam, Sister Teresa Pearl Muhammad. Thank you for watching as well. My next question is, Sister Sierra, how did your parents feel about Brother Amir once once they found out? Um. I don't know, that's kind of difficult to say. Um, in the context of family, I have a lot of detachment from family and, and it's not my personal choice. So because of that, I was already kind of in my adulthood and you know making my own decisions by that time. So there really wasn't too much commentary on uh, him or our relationship from the standpoint of my family. It probably happened later, though, after, especially, you know, all these babies coming. That was a different <laughs> So okay. it, it wasn't, you know, it was no problem. Praise me so much. Okay, Brother Mir, how, how did your family accept Sincere? Oh, um, man, my it's the crazy thing is my mom don't like nobody. But mm -hmm. uh, from the first time she <laughs> met Sierra, she liked him. Mm -hmm. And uh, my father as well. 
when he when he met Sierra, he told me how he really felt about girls from the past. And I was like, damn, he was cordial because uh, I never would have known. But, you know, then when he broke it down from a father, because sometimes, you know, parents see stuff that we don't really necessarily see. And my yes, mother told me that as well. And uh, they both told me when they met her, uh, they seen that she was a genuine girl. They, they seen the same thing that I saw. And um, that's really why in college, I really didn't start dating her because uh, I, was, I was still of this world and she was really pure girl in school. So I didn't really want to mess with her uh, like that. So when my parents saw the same thing that I saw, uh, I was like, you know, for sure. Okay, yes sir, excellent. Um, so Sierra, who said I love you first? <laughs> mm, I don't have a clue. Man. Uh, I don't know. I mean, but I will say this, it's like when I first got to know him and it, you know, it's a difference between like real love and like loving someone. I loved him as soon as I like got to know, you know, got to know him. Um, I mean, that's really all I can say as far as who said it first. I don't have a clue. I don't remember. Okay. Um, yeah, because it, it was like, man, we really had a uh, a friendship. So it's like, how often do you tell your homies, like, yo, I love you, bro? Like, who? Mm -hmm. I don't know the who said, I love you for you, between myself and you, but I didn't know I said, yeah, I love you, bro. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it was like that because uh, college, like, she tutored me uh, in math. I was about to get kicked out of college and uh, I had to pass algebra, college algebra, and she was my tutor. And okay. uh, she was just like, man, we, I mean, really just my friend. So that dynamic, it just never was like that, man. So it, it was, it's crazy to, to think about that. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So from the mirror, I know I feel, I love you now. I feel, I love you now. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> crazy to a lot. Brother Mir, how did you? Uh, my sister Naima says, "Oh, uh, Brother Mir, how did you propose uh, to Cecilia?" <laughs> Yo, I, 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 it's funny, man. Uh, Cause I really owe her, uh, like Allah blessed me with her because I had so much developing to do. So the romantic part of marriage and relationship, I never really did that. Uh, mm. So I want to redo all of that. Like she didn't get a wedding and get all of the emotion, you know, the big stuff. So anyway, we were at one of my fraternity brother's house and um, mm. man, it was just a lot of stuff going on in our life and a lot of insecurities, you know? And so uh, I already knew, like, look, this is something that uh, a woman would it would make you. This is something that gives a woman some sense of security. Because uh, I was still in school. I had no money for all of that stuff. Uh, so we was at my fraternity brother's house, and I was sitting next to her on the couch. And uh, I pulled the ring out. I was like, uh, you know what this means. <laughs> yeah. It was cute. Okay. <laughs> What's this year? What made you uh, accept, accept this proposal? Uh, like I said, I loved him since I knew him. And mm. uh, I saw who he was all along, you know. Um, again, his uh, exhibits of brotherhood were more than apparent. You know, he really wanted for his brothers in college what he wanted for himself, as we say. So mm. just seeing him really exemplify that, uh, I mean, I would never say no. Okay, beautiful. Okay, um, uh, so Teresa uh, says beautiful couple. My sister Mimi says beautiful couple. The next question I want to know is, we'll start with you, uh, brother Amir. What has been your greatest trial since you've been married and how have you overcome that? <laughs> Man, the biggest trial I think uh, in marriage is myself. Uh, <laughs> 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 and, and the reason why I say that though, bro, is because when I met him, when we first got together, I wasn't uh, back in the teachings. Yeah, I wasn't practicing. Uh, like, I, in fact, one of the things that made us, you know, cool again is our journey towards God. Because in college, man, I started going to church and all of that stuff, man. Mm -hmm. and she was going to church in the choir. And um, so this job that we had, we used to tutor uh, high school kids. And we used to have to drive like an hour away. And we used to just talk about the Bible and uh, just religion. And it was never like a debate. It was like a real conversation, you know? Okay. And so um, through that, 
through that, you know, when she got introduced to the teachings, she like ran with it, man. And I still was a nigga. But uh, she ran with it, man. And I'm like, yo, you know, hold up. Because at this point now, I'm back with Islam, but I'm like, I don't know about the nation, but I know Christianity ain't it. But when she heard the minister, she was like, nah, this is, this is it. So okay. when she started, when she became a student uh, of, of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, now I'm dealing with it. I got to deal with her different. So mm -hmm. the, the, sometimes we as people, who uh, have identities that's really not us, man. And yeah. it's just conditioned by this world, but you don't know that. But by the grace of Allah, because she was a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, she was patient with me and my stupidity. And through that patience, I was able to see that it was me um, through all of the development, man, because just in college, man, that, that's a lot of stuff going on, being yeah. away from home. Um, just being black, a black man in, in this world, man, it's a lot. Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. Uh, the trial of a black man, you know, just her support and understanding that, you know, it's not a mere, some, some stuff is me, but some stuff is just a condition of a black man, like regardless mm. and vice versa. I know Dr. Abel's book helped us a lot. So much. Um, okay, okay. Because okay. now you don't look at it, her, it wasn't like a personal thing and, and, from her development in the teachings made me develop, if that makes sense. I don't know if that- uh, That makes sense. That makes sense. It. that makes sense. So the biggest trial that that has been was the friction that I would cause, you know, if it's an economic problem, it's my, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just everything, but because of the patience, because I've had economics pro economic problems and not, like the average situation because of the teachings. Once she was patient with me and through the patience, you now got to analyze how you deal with the individual that shows you mercy when they really don't. Because we, uh, you know, you dealt with some situations, man. And, yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, so yes, sir, myself, I, I would say. Okay, um, beautiful. Oh, and <laughs> no, no, that was great, man. Uh, Sister Teresa says she appreciates the down to earth truthfulness, much respect. My sister Naima says beautiful testimony. Sister Sierra, what has been your uh, greatest trial uh, in the marriage and how did you overcome that? I would say it's myself in so many ways. You know, everything in life is about perspective. You know, when we change or develop into beings that don't just feel, but we think through our problems, we're able to better uh, navigate and we're more equipped to deal with those situations that we have to deal with. So, you know, uh, I would say that the biggest struggle was overcoming pride. It was overcoming ego. It was overcoming uh, an independent self because, you know, when you're not married, you're not your independent self anymore. You know, mm -hmm. it changes the dynamic of who you are as a person. And uh, ultimately, I would really just say that. And the reason why is because going back to what he said is I understood that this was a systematic thing that we were dealing with, you know? So with that being said, when I had to go back and reflect and be patient with him, as he said, um, I had to talk a lot to myself, you know, and deal with the feelings that I felt and, and bring the truth out of the feelings that I felt because half of the things we feel are not true. I would say 95% of the things we feel are not true. Mm -hmm. So uh, just learning not to take those things personal uh, really was the trial. Praise be to a lot. Sister, and thank you all for your transparency. Sister uh, Tracy says, I love the vulnerability of your interviews. This is sweet. They are so sweet. Women are powerful. That's why 75% of the work is with us. Good job, family. And Sister uh, Teresa Pearl Muhammad says, Sister Tracy, so true. Um, what you said about that, Josh, you know, again, my wife, we were talking, a lot of the times we take that, that quote, 75% uh, of the work is with the women. We like, yo, we got to get them straight because they <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, but the word with means together, you know? So working with, uh, with the woman is very important. And through that is where, where everything is going to change. Um, that's one of the biggest things that I've learned as well. 
that's the harmony to everything mm -hmm. that counts. So there's so much into that quote. Praise be so Allah. Uh, my sister Mimi says, thank you all for sharing. My next question is, Brother Mir, what has been your greatest joy in marriage? Man, you know, just witnessing, uh, I don't know, I was just being married to her and, and knowing that Allah really had his hand on it because I'm a fool. Man. <laughs> <laughs> if it was for a mayor, but a lot like really took control of the circumstances Entirely. and um, just witnessing you give her give birth to all of my children from the time of conception to the time that they were delivered and the process that she just submitted to like the first two were at the hospital but then the uh, other three were at the midwife. And just to see her to go through that process and waking up at night and just being a mother, uh, being able to see that process um, has probably been the greatest joy because through that process, it allowed me to uh, grow myself as an individual. And you know, a lot is uh, the unification of both. And when we learn from the female, um, the things that is in us that is not. So I used to be like, man, that's some feminine stuff. And she yeah. correct me like, no, that's human because if you're doing it, then it's not feminine. So, but realizing to get to that point to where it's not just you looking at feminine and masculine type deals, but you only get that through the marriage process and just learning why Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says um, marriage is half the faith because that really, helps you become and start understanding the oneness with Allah when you could be one uh, with your partner. Praise be to Allah. Okay, but me, you put a lot of pressure on me out here with these sisters watching now. <laughs> you teach it. Uh, Sister Teresa says, thank you for sharing your beautiful experience. I'm learning so much. Sister, um, Sister, Sister Sierra, what has been your greatest joy in, in since, since you've been married? Oh my goodness. Uh... I think that the, the peace I found in, in myself, again, like it, everything goes again to self because it's all perception. And the peace has come, of course, because of the journey. You know, we come into this thing, I mean, this world, and we're shaped in iniquity, as we know. Mm -hmm. So we get all of these uh, attachments and this baggage that, you know, weighs us down and makes us this uh, false version of ourselves that we present to the world and to ourselves, you know, cause it, uh, we, we definitely put on for ourselves as well. So what I would say is, uh, you know, before marriage, um, I was dealing with the woes of the world. I was insecure, you know, I was trying to figure things out. I didn't really have direction. Um, I didn't understand the power in myself. Um, I didn't see the beauty in the essence of the black man, all of that, you know? And so all going through the struggle allowed me to see uh, the better part of myself and my husband. And so I'm grateful for that. Praise be to a lot. Hey, we have a quick commercial break. I gotta give a shout out to all of the new sponsors and the previous sponsors as well. We have designsofcomposure.com as well as Colleagues Boutique on Instagram. Uh, Supreme's Men's Clothing in St. Louis, Missouri, 10835 West, La West Florescent Avenue. The phone number is 314-528-555. If you all want to get fresh, they will help you drip. Go to Supreme Men's Fashions, Colleagues Boutique, and Design of Composure. Also, my brother uh, Rashad has a video production company called Street Premiere. Thank you for him. He's working on video editing. He got a drone. He's working on a lot of great things. Uh, Supreme Spring Water, uh, my sister's Miriam's book, ABC I Love Me, and the coloring book is both on Amazon. Thank you, Mimi, for always showing love. Thank you, Rashad. Thank you, everybody else. My second book, Cleopatra, is on Amazon. Thank you all for your support. Last but not least, my father's book, A Soldier in the Art in the Movement of Christ, AbdulSharifMuhammad.com. Thank you very much, Dad, for showing love for the podcast. If there's anyone who is watching who wants to sponsor an episode, uh, Cash App J Imagination. We'll set it up. We'll promote it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and YouTube as well. Thank you all for liking and subscribing. Um, my Facebook is has maxed out now, so now I'm going to be putting a lot of stuff on YouTube. Uh, so like, subscribe, and share. It's off the record, Josh, on YouTube. Boom. Back to you all. Um, this is dope. Brother, I got that, man. No, for to a lot. Brother Mir, what do you do 
for uh for a long time as a man, five children, got a wife. What do you do for a long time? Uh there I think the alone time is just your time, you know, like when I go to work, I'm by myself driving or okay. in my office or hit the mission when I'm at the mosque, like you know, that's a break from from the chaos of uh, of the children. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine. Because I don't never, I wish I had more alone time with my wife, but those those five rascals, man, it's, it's always somebody. So that's the alone time that I don't get uh, to have. Uh, but other than that, like, man, if I'm not at the gym, um, at the mosque or at work, I'm at home. And uh, when I'm at those things, you know, that's my time of working out and clearing my mind. Like, like I said, she's my friend. so. Hanging out with my boys or stuff like that ain't really like if you ain't it's my brothers is at the mosque or we're training like that. That's what I do now as a, as a as a dad. You know, I'm not gonna say as an adult because if I didn't have children in life, then maybe I would. But as a dad, like man, you know, they got the time. You know, praise be to a lot to Sierra <laughs> as a wife, mother, five children. Do you get a long time? Mm. It happens like not even once in a blue moon. <laughs> I don't know the phrase for that, but whatever phrase that nice little catchphrase that we have for less than a blue moon, that's when. Mm. I just send her on missions though. Does. She don't be on. I don't go like going, but I don't want to be by myself. Honestly, mm. like you know. Mm. Uh, so he'll try to send me to uh, do whatever I want to do, but I'm always just like, eh. I'd rather you go with me. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay. What What do you want to do for fun? Uh, <laughs> whatever, man. I, I don't know. Shoot the dozens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Like she's really, you know, and, and that was a good, that was one thing that made me realize. That's why I say, you know, a lot center because, um, it really didn't start off like with a superficial liking. Like I didn't lust for her mm -hmm. uh, starting off. So I, I already always had an appreciation for her company. So to be able to enjoy whatever we do, like I can hate what we're doing, but because I'm doing it with her, it, it's fun, you know? So Great. doing something fun is, uh, it's like whatever, like we'll go to bowling or something like that and we'll have more fun cutting up on the side and actually bowling. So, you know, she's really a good uh, friend. I joke with her a lot, like she's a homie and give her down. <laughs> okay. So she's really a good friend. That's beautiful. I'm, I'm coming back to that friend comment too, because, oh, but first, T. Pharaoh Muhammad says, Salam alaikum, alaikum salam. This is a great subject. He loves seeing black on black love. Also seeing the Detroit hat. Yes, sir. Represent for <laughs> Yes, I got it when I was in Detroit. Matter of fact, for T. Pharaoh. Okay. Um, brother, yeah, Rizzo. Uh, Detroit had to. This is Detroit had to. Yeah, exactly. So that's you know, unique, though. Yes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes, right. And I thought about it, like, which hat am I going to wear? <laughs> well, brother, me, I had a question for you, and then to Sister Sierra for the follow up. We, you know, we were taught coming up, man, you don't want to be in a friend zone with somebody because then it's hard to get out the friend zone. Like, you don't, you know, what I'm saying it's hard to look at somebody once they're already in a friend. Like, oh, it's just my friend. So, how did you go from? How, not did you all, but how should other people go from like, this is my friend to somebody who I want to marry? Sorry, with you, Brother Mary. Uh, again, what, well, I think see, what you said earlier is just that superficial thing. Like, we're going to get old eventually, man, and you're not going to look how you look now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, life happens. Uh, but if I don't like you, like what we going through right now, you know, all of those memes, like, yo, you realize, I think you even posted a funny one, like, you realize you don't like that boyfriend. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. You got to spend time with him. Like, you know, I think that we look for the wrong things in the beginning. Uh, like, if I really like that person. So that's what derails and makes you the friend zone. And sometimes the intentions, because... Sometimes the girl or the guy be straight up like I'm not interested. So sometimes the friend zone is that way in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on the in the nation, you should be no friend zone. We should be courting, but real life, yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, just to young people out there, 
that's the most uh, respectful thing. And, and that's a way that I think I was able to grow because uh, if I didn't respect her as a per person, when she challenged my areas of growth, I would have thought that she was just trying to control me or be, mm -hmm. you know, controlling and not really look at it like, yo, she really means I'm tripping right now or this, this, that, or the third. So, I, man, I, I don't know. I, I think it was, I just never was in the, the zone like that with her. I think my friend zone with her was like, man, I'm no, I'm toxic. So I don't want to let you in my zone because <laughs> okay, okay. I don't want to ruin, you know, because again, as much as we leave the teachings, you know, as youngsters growing up in the nation, we never lose that foundation. And when you got a, you know, a drug, <laughs> a drug dealer say, you know, somebody going to sell the drugs, I might as well get it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bad example. I probably hope any sister watching don't hate me for this example. But me growing up, like when you a sister had so pure intention, was pure, I really didn't mess with her because I knew that we can really contaminate and deal with them. So that's what that's how that situation was. Now, if I if we was fools, we was fools. I'm just like, <laughs> so, so that friend zone was like more protection. And that's actually how we even, it evolved because of the protection. Um, we worked the summer together and we had to move out the dorms, but I still had a house off campus. Mm -hmm. And so we closing and I'm like, you know, what are you gonna do? And she's like, man, I'm gonna stay at some of my friend's house on the couch. And I'm like, nah, man, that's a, a woman's not supposed to sneak house to couch like we do that. Mm -hmm. So we were going into a football camp. So we weren't even gonna be in the house. So mm -hmm. I told her like, you know, she, while we were in camp and because of that people on campus start saying like yo that was my girl and mm -hmm. because of that now um, mm -hmm. you know life hack that's what it's like well you know I guess you know you you, <laughs> you it's a duck it's a duck then you yeah, 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 but yeah, it came, yeah. I, I, I really got with her because of the protecting the mindset because of her pureness mm -hmm. um, so yeah that was again a long answer but it was just no, no, that was good that was good and I wanted to say because this. That's important to be friends though, Josh, that that's what allowed us, because we had some hard times as all marriages do, but that friendship is what really let us get past that. Uh, because it was couples uh, starting off that was jinxing like, oh, y'all not gonna make it a minute, it's crazy. You know, you need a man like this and he needs to be like that. Mm -hmm. And she like, yeah, all right. And now they separated and they hate each other mm -hmm. and all yeah. of that stuff. But they was never friends like us, you know. So mm -hmm. it's very important to be friends with your spouse, right? Okay. So, uh, okay. My sister Naima says this is a, a a perfect couple for National Black Marriage Day. So sweet. I know that was a real thing, Naima, but apparently today is National Black Marriage Day. Uh, Brother Ivan X easily says, uh, "ASA, tell your guests thank you for sharing. We as believers really need to hear this. Hearing them makes me look forward to getting married." After losing a wife to cancer 16 months ago, this is really good. All praises be to, to Allah. Uh, Sister Tracy says, these teachings are so potent that no matter how far we stray, we can't um, unrun its roots. Alhamdulillah for that. Thank you for putting her in a friend zone. That's a beautiful blessing. Praise be to Allah. That's real. Okay, so Sister Sierra, what advice would you give to future mothers? I would just say really start that journey of knowledge of present self, you know, uh, knowing who you are, um, realizing your emotions in unfavorable conditions. Uh, and I know that may sound like weird advice, but the reality is uh, having children is, that's a task, you know, being pregnant, that's a task and it's so busy. Uh, it's, it just never really stops. So that time for self-reflection becomes minimal. And you have to be so aware of yourself in those moments because you will lose yourself very easily with dealing with the babies, you know? Mm -hmm. They always need you. Everybody always needs you, you know? If it's not one, it's the next. If it's not the next, it's the other. If it's not the other, it's another, you know? It's just one coming at all day, every day. I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I gotta do everything for everybody. 
but have an awareness of, you know, I'm kind of really feeling anxiety right now. Why am I feeling this anxiety right now? Mm -hmm. You know, let me go talk to Allah about this anxiety real quick. Or, you know, I really kind of feel sad right now. What's causing or producing this feeling of sadness that I'm experiencing? Mm -hmm. And what's producing it is, well, you know, I just had a baby and I ain't combed my hair in three days. Maybe I should just go <laughs> my hair. Like, you know, you got a newborn, that's that's a struggle. And don't let don't let you have other children with a newborn. Mm -hmm. You know, we know our conduct, but life is real. So, mm -hmm. you know, just having an awareness of how to protect yourself and how to take care of yourself and really just making our lives sufficient uh, in those emotional turmoils. Praise be to Allah. And thank you all for your transparency again. And thank you all for watching. Our brother Mir, what advice would you give to future fathers? Man, patience. You got to have patience, man, because they're so patient with us. And a woman, man, is such a magnificent uh, individual uh, because of what they go through. Like, man, the babies be sleeping. We won't sleep. The mom's waking up, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, even today, like, my baby, the one-year-old, gets heavy. And mama carrying them all the time. Now, real life, I'm stronger than her. Yeah, but how can she carry her baby all day and, and never get tired? That's just amazing to me because I have her. I'm not here. Like, and sometimes <laughs> when we go, like, hey, my brother, you strong. <laughs> like, so, you know, patience and consideration and, and, and being in tune with, with uh, your child's mother. And I'm going to say that because in a perfect world, you'll say your wife, but your child is, is even more important uh, the mercy that you show. Uh, when it is those kind of circumstances, your child's mother, because it's a lot that they're dealing with. Uh, when they're pregnant, their body is different, you know, so it's important to encourage them and uh, make them feel secure, as she said, before the baby and then after the baby. Uh, what I learned is just your presence, man. And, and that's why I be home a lot, too, because just your presence makes a difference in how the children act and uh, how your wife feels. Uh, about you being there because as she was saying those emotions that you don't know how you're feeling a lot of the times it's, it's stimulated by us so uh future fathers man just you know if your boy can steal a hundred dollars from you and you back cool with him and y'all argue with him, <laughs> now your spouse can't say clean up your dirty drawers and you lazy and it, <laughs> you, you, you get on my and i ain't going back like, nah, you should be able to have the worst uh, disagreement with your spouse and get past that uh, if we do our friends like that. So uh, I would say to, to the future fathers, like, you got to be friends with uh, the mother of your child because everything that you put into that mother, she's going to initially put into your child yeah. Yeah. consciously or unconsciously. So... However you want your son or your daughter to, to view you is how you got to treat your, the mother of, of the child. And uh, just always respect the mother of your, of your child. And then that's going to make her love you and make your children always respect you. And that's what um, that's what I think we do it for. And I'm a young father, though, so my oldest ain't is like nine. So I, I don't, I'm trying. It may not work. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yo, this dude is crazy. Okay, now so Sierra, what advice would you give to future wives? I would say read Real Love by Dr. Ava Muhammad. Mm -hmm. uh, because that book has so many little jewels, you know, that would just stay with you until it blossomed into something else. So it's like you read it and of course you get what you get from it. And then you read it again and you get like the next level understanding you know, and I think one of the most fundamental things that uh, the book said uh, was the nature of man and woman as told to us by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. It says that a man's first nature is his need. Mm -hmm. And a woman's first nature is to be pleasing. And the, sec the second nature of a woman is to demand good treatment. And mm -hmm. to correlate those uh statements or theories of our, our not, I don't want to say theories, those statements about our natures. Um, he gave the example of Allah creating himself and out of his need, he created the second self, which is, you know, the female. And so the reason why this is so pivotal in relationships 
is because how we interact with one another plays on that nature and the emotions that are produced are from the nature that that's there. And right now the imbalance of said nature, you know, because we don't really distinctly know masculine, feminine. We yeah. don't distinctly know the characteristics that we should carry with us and in the proper moments to carry them out. Um, so I would just say really read that book and begin to study natures, begin to understand, you know, in what ways you desire to be pleasing. Uh, and in making our lives sufficient in that desire, because that desire can be very oppressive. Um, and then with them, I mean, I think that just noticing the effect that your nature has on us is a, a very, very important component of beginning to understand each other and gaining har harmony in a marriage. Praise be so uh, beautiful. And thank you all for watching. Sister Mimi says, my sister Mimi says, teach this. Sister Nita says that book is everything. It helped you understand to make male and female, I mean, male and female nature. Praise be to Allah. Okay, Brother Mir, what uh, advice would you give to future husbands? Man. <laughs> <laughs> what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing, man, because um, we just operate from two, what I learned. And man, if we, you gotta humble yourself to be a student. Uh, I was watching an interview with Sister Valerie and she said um, about drill, like, and you got, I forgot what she said, but it was something about the submission and um, dang, I, I, I hate what, I forgot what she said, but it was key. But when you, if you can't submit to someone that you deem worthy to, I, I don't know the right words, but what I'm going to say is we just think different, male and female. Yeah. And a lot arguments is because we both thinking from our own perspective and not thinking from the other's perspective. So an example that she told me, a man to come in and say, my back hurts. The woman to go and start rubbing the back immediately. A woman to be like, my back hurts. The man to say, well, what did you do today to make your back hurt? Mm -hmm. We yeah. trying to find the solution to not make your back hurt. Yeah. They just want the back rub. They know what, what they did and all of that. That's it, this is my everyday, my back hurt. And I can't not do this. But we're trying to, again, like, what, what happened? Like, let me move this mountain so it's not hurting your back no more. Because we're thinking of something doing harm to you versus how to ease that burden that's inevitable. Yeah. So learning that we have to step out of our understanding and be able to look at each other's perspective as human beings, you know, it, it goes beyond just male and female. Um, that that's the key. And, and that book is, is definitely good for, for the male as well, because through her learning that stuff and using me as a, a Guinea pig, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, <laughs> I had to submit to the truth. And the truth is that, and do that in a lot of our problems or altercations. Um, just use the teachings, man. I, I really can't advise a future husband of this world, but somebody that submits in is a student of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Like, that's the end all be all in, in our relationship, man. And, and that's been our success. I'll be pissed off if she's like, you know, Mr. Farrakhan says. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. But still, you know, and, and now as I go, and, and this is the key part, then she just leaves me alone. And now in my brain, it's working because the truth got to work, you know? <laughs> so because, and then she'll come back and say, something like, would you like some coffee? And I'm like, oh. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I like some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and she's still nice. And so so then that'll help me. So, so recognizing that, brothers, that, you know, she's really not trying to be uh, at odds. And even if she is confrontational, just being, the, I guess all I'm saying is the patience, man. It's, and patience, you only get patience through trial. But once you deem somebody worthy of that regard to be patient for and to give yourself to be selfless for, then, um, then you can do it. And the scripture, how can you love God who you don't see, but yeah. hate your brother who you do see? Like you can't love a lot and you cannot get along. Once you say I do and all of that, that yo, know, I it's it's a solution. Like unless extenuating circumstances happen, and that's life, we know that. But 
yo, you can get along. Like that, that's finding peace and trying to get along, man, and patience. And it's patience in the struggle, man. I was kind of long-winded on all No, that. no, that was good. That was good. <laughs> well, I, I want to say that, well, th- the comments, of course, a lot of people saying thank you, teach, and preach. I just want to thank y'all for y'all transparency. Y'all are a beautiful couple. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, this year, I don't know if you know, but I, I admire your husband a great deal. You know, he's a descendant. Likewise. I'm a descendant of you know, sons of men who have to put in work. So we we have, we locked in together, you know. <laughs> you know, your children, I, I only met them one time, but, you know, those are my nephews and nieces. So sure I love them. And we uh, thank y'all for coming on the People's Podcast. I really appreciate it. We're going to uh, put this on YouTube this evening. And um, it's, I got to get both of those books you held up, bro. your sister's book and then your book. Uh, oh, praise be to God. Yes, uh, okay. I got, I got a question. If people want to reach out to you all uh, via social media to uh, ask advice about, you know, relationships and things, is that okay? Oh, oh absolutely. I'm that? always here for my sisters. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So sisters, reach out to Sierra and brothers, reach out to Brother Mir on social media. And let's keep this strong family, strong nation. All right, thank y'all for coming on. And this time more than ever right now, you know, uh, we really got it. This is where we, you know, what we saying that we are, we're alive in that transition, man. So this is where we get a chance to become new again from somebody was teaching that about the cocoon and coming out of, we being forced to be in like a cocoon and to come out a new person. I forgot what student minister was teaching. <laughs> That's good. Excellent. Well, thank y'all for coming on and thank y'all for watching. All right, somebody. Wake Slime, love you more.